really major to label, it will look just like the picture that you see in your text or your lab. All right, the labeling. Um, if there's any matching that I can put together, I might have some matching. And no. I, you know, love that question. That would be so awesome. I've Kind of help you narrow down which uh, uh, figures or uh, we might need to look at. Um, um, okay, hold up. Let me see. Or is there something that you would like us to The 11th? Yes, Tuesday. Tuesday at 8 o'clock. <laughs> okay, so when you go into Blackboard and you go to the area that says for uh, well, it's actually under PowerPoint, but these objectives slash study guide, when you open that, for example, chapter 13, where it has like identify, these would be things that could come up as like a picture for labeling. So you'll see it's got like in this particular chapter areas of the spinal cord, like the cervical, thoracic, the enlargement, that sort of thing. Um, it's got what looks like um, information on labeling one of the sections, like the picture of the section. That looks like that's it for 13. And 14, all right, so identify the structures of the brain, like um, cerebrum. Now. Um, most definitely, something such as frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital lobes, okay? Most definitely, um, knowing the difference between a sulci and a gyri. Um, now, under this portion right here for the diencephalon, yes, I would want you to be able to tell me thalamus or hypothalamus. The rest of these, do you guys remember how when we were looking at that picture and it had all those different colors of those masses that were present? 
I don't want you, you don't have to know each one of those individually. Okay? Know that there was the region for the thalamus and an area for the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus always looks like it's got the W at the bottom of it. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, of course, like the midbrain pons, medulla. I would not ask you about this corpora quadrigemina, the peduncles, but definitely no midbrain pons, medulla. All right. So that's pretty much it for 13 and 14 for labeling. So if you see those pictures, um, like, you know how like the pictures in your book, they'll have like, you know, this view of the brain, this view of the brain, that view, that sort of thing. Just be familiar and be able to say, okay, well maybe this is the frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital, that's it. Okay? And then, I'm not sure if anybody's noticed, but under the, um, under the study guide, I have both 13 and 14 posted. So definitely pay attention to that. I have no idea. I haven't made it yet. <laughs> that, will, that will probably happen Monday evening before I see y'all on Tuesday morning. <laughs> Um, but to know our teacher friends too. Huh? Let's know our teacher friends too. Yeah. Um, for the most part, um, Olivia, it's probably not going to be much over like 60 questions. Are they scantrons? No, I'll provide the answer sheet. Yeah, you don't need any scantrons. I'll actually create the answer sheet for you. Um, but this is sort of like. If you use what I post as these individual chapter study guides, okay? Has anybody opened these, looked at these, printed these off? If you use those as you are reading, completing work, this sort of thing, studying these along with all the stuff you're doing, you, you should do great on my staff. Because I have given you everything in these right here. I've given you everything I want you to know. So the only thing you'll be tested on is this. Any questions? So we could just probably just go through these two study guides. That's probably a lot more information and then take it down to the other study guys that you showed us. That's going to be more concise. The other one's more of objective. Yeah. Okay. However, that identify, okay, be sure to pay attention to the identify portion. The rest of it, I used to think that it was like a good study guide, but well, it's basically the objectives that are written for the course as a whole. So in other words, every single professor who is teaching 142 has the same list. And that's why I took it and made my own. Because this is what you're going to need to know when you go in to take the test for your program. So if you utilize those, you won't be sorry. You'll definitely benefit from using those. Any questions? All right, well, let's finish up chapter 14. We left off in this chapter because, once again, brain, spine, um, cranial nerves, and we've been talking about different areas of the brain, and we've been learning about these functions that are associated with them. We left off at the point of cognition. Because we learned at this point that we have what's been termed our 
primitive portion of the brain, which was what? What did I say was the primitive portion of the brain? My brain stem. So that's going to be my midbrain, my pond, my medulla oblongata. Then we talked about the cerebellum, and then we have now moved into the cerebrum. And in the cerebrum is where we're going to find our higher order thinking. The midbrain, uh, the brain stem, the cerebellum. A lot of the function for those areas is a lot of what we need for maintaining homeostasis, for being able to maintain balance and posture and all this sort of stuff. So for us to begin to think, note my terminology, for us to begin to think, our cerebrum is going to be based on that. Cognition, how we get and use information, the mental processes that we use, writing, looking at, um, studying, reading, all these sort of things. Is that off now? Make sure they're off. We get and use information in a lot of different ways. Sensory information. Stuff that's around us. How we might use sight, smell, hearing, thought. Well, lots of thoughts can or may not run through your brain. Reasoning, the ability to make sense of the information that we're looking at. Judgment, right, wrong, memory. Hmm? Are we going to have it be short-term memory? Are we going to have it be long-term memory? Imagination, a lot of that comes camp down nowadays for people. Intuition, when the hairs on the back of your neck might stand up or you kind of get a gut feeling, something to that effect, definitely pay attention to those. For us to be able to make sense out of information, the brain has this amazing ability to take all of these little snapshot of life every day. That information is getting stored, some of it's tossed out, some of it is kept, and when we hear or learn or see or participate, whatever, in something new, one of the things that your brain is going to be able to do is try, or one of the things it's going to try to do, associate that information. Is that going to be information that we already have, or is it going to be information that is new? So, we're going to be able to see that certain areas in the cerebrum. Remember, this is the seat of higher order thinking. The parietal area, that will perceive and attend to the stimuli. Doesn't mean it's going to respond. Okay, it's going to help recognize. The temporal, what type of stimuli is it? Are we looking at something that's going to be general sense? Are we looking at something that is sound? What, what type of stimuli is it? The frontal area helps to plan a response. Do I need to make a movement 